Gå ind for Ysengel. Gå ind for Ysengel. Armor du kree. Armor du kree. Welcome to James Gunn getting all the music he wants cast. He actually didn't get one for this one, he said. Yeah, apparently this was the first time in the trilogy that he didn't get a song he wanted. I don't remember why. I don't either. Or like, where, like, why he wanted that one. For the most part, people just love James Gunn, and understandably, I love James Gunn. I don't even know James Gunn personally. James Gunn, if you're listening, I'd love to meet you. I love you Super. The director of Slither? And Super. That's all he made? What? He also cameoed in Harley Quinn. That's about all he's done, though. He, he's done some other stuff, too, <laughs> but Harley Quinn's very good. Love that show. Can't wait for it to come back. Anyway. So what do you... How do we start this? I guess... I don't remember how to do this. It's been a while. I like the other Guardians. Yeah, I guess we could talk about the first two Guardians before Guardians we get into the third. Um, in general. I went back and rewatched the first and the second. Uh, it's been nine years since the first one, and the second one was 2017. And this is a six-year gap between the second and third. I didn't even think about that for a little while. But I think they said it was the biggest gap between sequels. Really? With the Guardians, yeah. That makes sense. Um, but uh, we'll get into the third one a bit, but... Uh, this is like a trilogy of films that's like literally if someone was like if someone said any of the three were their favorite I would not fault them at all and I'd be like yeah, yeah that's no, totally that's what talking about. she asked me and I asked her and I, I, I legitimately couldn't think I know like it's hard like I think the first one's probably like the best barely my least favorite the first one like barely and I love the first one and I love the second one I love the third one we'll, we'll, we'll obviously talk about it but the first one I went back I went back and rewatched it and uh, just, it, it was, it was like, when I first saw it back in 2014 in the theater, it, I think it was like immediately my favorite Marvel film of like all the ones they had done so far. Looking back, I probably liked the Avengers of the ones that came before a little more. Um, that's only the first one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at that time, which is also crazy to think about, but, but I was like, th- these were characters I barely knew. I knew the character of Rocket Raccoon because he was a super obscure character and like I heard about him on some trivia thing. So I learned about him. And, like, I knew about, like, I that's pretty much all I knew about. I knew about Star-Lord a little bit. But the Guardians, like, characters were super, like, obscure. Yeah, when it came out, and I didn't even want to go see it, my mom just took me to it, and she told me it was a Marvel movie. I didn't even know it was, like, an Avengers movie. I thought it was, like, it was his own thing. Right, yeah. Like, it, it's, and did, it's they, crazy. And they stayed disconnected until Infinity War anyway. Right, and they've all they all feel very much so like their own like actual trilogy Franchise, film. Like like yeah. there's story elements you need from the other films to like play in, but like they more build on other things. Like, yeah, when Allie watched the first Guardians, she didn't even know there was like an Infinity Stone was the main plot point. Like she didn't know that was in the orb. Yeah, so it was exactly. actually really cool what she realized it was like all connected. Right, and, like, yeah. They literally explained the Infinity Stones in the first one for the first time. Yeah, which James, which Gunn, James Gunn took a like lot of time. Yeah. He said like he just told me to make it up. And that's what he made. And I was like, I just made up some crap about Infinity Stones, but, <clears throat> but uh, revisiting it, I was like, this is just super solid. The introduction to these characters—they're the most likable characters. They're amongst also, the most likable characters in the whole MCU. I fucking love Kurt Russell in Volume Two. Oh, he's, he's incredible. Such a great villain. He's incredible. He's just such a good actor in general. Um, but the first is a great introduction to the characters, and it's a great overall story. You, it really feels like the team actually builds up, like for a reason, because they don't really want to work together, but then they do. And then it, it, none of it feels really forced, um, and it's just and it's also James Gunn. He's got his own uh, perfect cast too. Oh yeah, casting is perfect. I mean, I, I know I part mean, of it's probably because James Gunn just makes them work together really well. Yeah, easily my favorite thing Chris Pratt's ever done. Um, these movies. Uh, Zoe Saldana is really good as Gamora. I forgot how good. Uh, the girl plays Nebula is like really underrated. Yeah, Karen Gillan is incredible. It's funny because she was also in like Jumanji, the next level, which like. I mean, for what she was given in those movies. She did right, yeah. Them. She's really good as Nebula. Like, incredible. She even um, went bald for the first one, and she didn't have to. Right, yeah. Yeah, they told her that after she got bald. Yeah. She was like, oh, now I'm just bald. Uh, Dave Batista is, in my opinion, the best wrestler turned, like, full-time actor, pretty much. As far as, like, actually acting. Because uh, it's not like he's going to blow anybody away, but in most movies he's in, he actually gives a pretty decent performance. And he's he's great as Drax. He does it just he does it just right. He's got the physique for it. He's got the he's got the ability to give the deadpan. The... Yeah, I really like how they conclude him as well. Oh, yeah. The only thing I didn't really like about Drax was that it felt like they were like really building up him and Thanos having something happen. And like they didn't really interact much at all. Yeah, I know. 
Because I would say also because I was the even... biggest complaint about the whole trilogy in general is probably the only thing I really like dislike is Ronan. I don't really like Ronan's fine. Yeah, that that's probably why the first one's but my ever since that one, like every favorite. villain he's done in any comic book movie's been great. So yeah, that's probably I know you didn't finish Peacemaker, but uh, Peacemaker's dad. Yeah, he's a really good villain on that. Right. Yeah. I saw the seeds of that. I haven't finished it, but um, yeah. but yeah, like revisiting the first one, I was like, yeah, Ronan's just kind of like he's just not great in general. It just kind of felt like a. Well, that was like Phase Two, so that, that just kind of felt like the Phase Two kind of villains. Like a lot of them weren't that great. Like, yeah. Like, fucking Yellow Jacket, fucking <laughs> the Dark Elves, fucking the Mandarin. Yeah. Like that shit. The, the, only, the only like notable villain from Phase Two was fucking Ultron. They right. just killed off. Right, and then... A liberal robot. And he was also in the worst Avengers movie. And it was just kind of like, alright. Phase 2 was just kind of a mess. Besides Guardians. Exactly, yeah. And Captain America 2. Yeah, of course, yeah. Winter Soldier really good. And then, <clears throat> just in general, it's a really consistent movie. James Gunn's got his own distinct, like, style of humor. Did and he also it, write it works all with of me. these? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. By himself? I'm pretty, pretty sure. sure. I'm pretty sure he did. I, I, would, I, could be I wouldn't be surprised if he had helped on, like, the first one. Yeah, but. that could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did. Um... And uh, his just style of humor, it really gels with me. I know, obviously, it wouldn't work with everybody. It's very distinct. I mean, anybody watches it, but it's not funny. Right, yeah. Like, in, like in, in the general, theaters, it's pretty I've good. Seen all three in theaters, I've always been laughing. Yeah, the, the, uh, yeah. And he, he can do good dramatic moments, too. He's great with character work. He's just a really good filmmaker in general. It's just, you know, if he, was, if he, if he branched out more and did a lot more genres, I think he could do it pretty successfully. Uh, but superhero movies, he just gels well with those. And, um,. Yeah, the first Guardians is is it, it was really it was really nice to see uh, really obscure characters, but they still. Yeah, uh, my, my mom really liked it too. Yeah, and they they got uh, their time to shine, and then they became some of the most beloved okay. in the MCU. There was three writers for the first one. Okay, that makes sense. But I believe two and three were hmm. just him. Which like, and uh, yeah, some of the most beloved characters. Rock is my favorite character in the entire MCU, even before Volume Three. Um, and also, Bradley Cooper's voice performance is incredible. He's especially in three. Oh yeah, he he absolutely killed it. Pretty much steps it up in each one. Yeah, he's 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 a really good actor. Oh, I guess there was three writers on two. Maybe it was all of them. Who knows? But I think those were the same hmm. writers. But yeah, the thing we were talking about, how long they were like, so like, if we're gonna have Bradley Cooper not even do his own voice, like, why are we having him and why are we paying him? And then James Gunn was like, because he's an actor doing a role, like it's his performance. <laughs> And it's like, oh, okay. Vin Diesel's fine, though. <laughs> so, so the only one that was just written by James Gunn was the third one. That makes sense. The third one feels the most James Gunn. Which we could also talk about the fucking fucked up, like, process to make the third one. Where, like, he got fired and, like, went to DC and then got rehired. Yeah. But then, like, he was making Suicide Squad when he was writing the third one. Yeah. And then, like, he did Peacemaker and then he did the Holiday Special and then he did three. Like, he's had, like, no life. Yeah, He also no. got married while doing this. Yeah, he got married to the... That main, one girl, one of the yeah. main girls of fucking Peacemaker. Yeah, and it's like that, like that. that all of this is going on. He's like white hair now, and like the fact, yeah, he's still, he looks so old. And the I think he died though. He died of stuff. I don't think he's actually. Old. Yeah, I don't know. He it's probably like did. White. Yeah, like it, it's pretty. No way, know. making Peacemaker was that stressful. <laughs> The fact that volumes volume three turned out the way it did, and considering everything that was going on, is pretty is pretty impressive. But, um. For the longest time, it was always tough for me to decide if I liked the first or second better. I think I eventually decided I liked the second slightly better. Um, just it's it, it's the it's sec- more dramatic, I guess. Yeah, the second movie's ability to balance the comedy and the drama, but like also zip back and forth, and it, it create it sets up the right tone to do that is just incredible. Uh, Yondu is a much better character, and they use him a lot more. Obviously, he's a bit bigger part of the story. Uh, Kurt Russell, like we said, ego, great villain. Absolutely and incredible. And the girl who plays Mantis, even though I don't love Mantis, she's still good. Yeah, she's a good actress. Yeah. She's a lot better than she the third one. She well with them in yeah. like one movie later than most of them. Right, yeah. and uh, Same with Adam Warlock, even though he wasn't in a much. I thought he was good. I thought he was him. good, too. I thought it was just the right amount. Apparently, so you knew that Adam Warlock was supposed to be in the second one. Yeah, but then... But like, James Gunn decided there was too many characters. He was like, I just can't make this work. So then he, he scrapped Adam Warlock. And then he said the third one, the hardest character to write for was Adam Warlock. yeah. And everybody was like saying, uh, that means um, he'll write a terrible Superman movie. Even though what he meant was it was hard to write a character with Superman like abilities in a third movie in a trilogy. Yeah. With a completely new character. Right. That he just had to introduce. And it, it was also kind of hard to adapt the character because he's kind of similar to Vision in a lot of ways. Yeah, he is. Because wasn't Adam Warlock originally powered by Infinity Stone, too? I'm pretty sure. But they just 
redo them. Yeah, it all gets kind of hazy with like the amount of like Marvel storylines. Yeah, but if you look at Justice but... Trilogy, it has really good connectivity. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't even think you really need to watch Endgame and Infinity War to watch the third one. Even no, though I don't think helps. so. The the main thing is just obviously like if you go from the second one to the third one because like Quill and Gamora, okay. and then it's just like oh yeah, she just doesn't know who you are because like that that was a big plot point throughout Infinity, especially in Infinity War because that's the reason that Star Lord like freaking. <laughs> freaks out on Thanos and then ruins all yeah, that. Yeah, but James Gunn also said he wouldn't have done that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, it was James Gunn. Yeah, the only thing they consulted him on for Infinity War, he said, was the song, The Rubber Band Man. Yeah. That was the only thing he added. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask him, like, if it was consistent with his writing, his characters, his story, just what song he wants. Right. Yeah. And they did. Still great characters, though. And what it, what it really comes down to is just... Volume two is such a fun time, but it's also super dramatic and it has it has great character moments and I absolutely love it. Uh, I'd give the first one like a really high seven, and then volume two like around like an eight. I don't know if it's a low eight or not, but like it's like it's in that same range. It's like the, the, those are both movies that I absolutely love, and they're some of my favorite superhero movies really like ever. Absolutely love them. And then we finally got volume three this year, and I don't know if it's my favorite, but it might be. The more I've been thinking about it. I'm not sure though. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, we haven't brought up the villain in three, who, the actor's in yeah. Peacemaker. Uh, he was really good yeah. in that. I don't know. I don't remember how far he got. Um, but he was really good in this. I yeah, kind of, I kind of really wanted good. a bit, like I hated him, which I know was like the thing, but I almost felt like I got. I wish we got a bit more on him as a character. Yeah, I know. There's he just, just he kind of just seemed like he was just made to like hate, which was like really yeah, well done, but yeah, it was well done. And like his only like development was that like his whole thing was he wanted, he wanted a perfect world yeah. or whatever. He wanted to change. He had that great line: "There is no god. That's why I stepped in." Yeah, and like really great acting. Uh, yeah. I really like his like the prosthetics and the makeup and stuff. Which, I think it was just, it was mostly well done because you could actually feel the, like, Rocket's backstory was great. Yeah, you could feel his, t t Rocket's turmoil with that character, which made him a good antagonist in the end. And the way they ended, the the scene with him finding all the baby raccoons was great. Um, yeah. I think I almost cried. I Yeah, I think I teared up a little bit at that moment. He actually made me almost cry over fucking raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of baby raccoons. Yeah, like, I'm just gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody's talking about now. They're like, me, when I see a raccoon on the street, just, like, picks it up. Um, After well, watching Volume like, 3 and I see raccoons on the side of the road. I love that one meme that was like, it was like, I hate hero movie people when they watching the backstory of a CGI cartoon. <laughs> it's like Danny DeVito, like, crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other characters have good development. I mean, Rocket really is kind of, like, the main focus. But then there's... And, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's definitely more to it, of course, like... It was the fact that, like, I didn't really see any of the endings for the characters. Like, I didn't, like, imagine those being the endings, but, like, when they happened, that just felt right. Right, like, yeah. Like, I didn't think Star Lord would go back to Earth at the end with his grandpa, but, like, it just felt like such a full circle thing. Right, Especially yeah. Especially it was in Volume 2 as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that... that ma It makes sense. And I didn't watch the holiday special, but, um... It was nice that even that kind of built into the movie because uh, Mantis and Star Lord, it seems like they had a much closer bond. Yeah. 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 It definitely Mantis, I know that Mantis one, was a pretty that's big part when they of find the. Out they're like related or whatever. Yeah. Or at least Star Lord finds out. Right. Uh, and then Gamora was the thing I was most interested in what they were going to do. I didn't know if they were actually going to have them get back together or not. But yeah. I thought the the last scene they had together was really sad. Yeah, I think the way that they did it was exactly right. And I know some people were, like, upset because it was like, oh, they, they didn't get back together. And it's like, yeah, but this this makes the most sense. Because she's not the same person. Right. But she's still, you can still see that character, the character that Quill's trying to find in there. You know what I mean? And then, like, it seeps through. And she it, even at that last scene, she's like, you know, I'm still, I'm not that person. But I can understand, like, what you're going through now. And it's like... Like, that moment was, like, that, that, was, that was pretty powerful in the right way. And um, I think that was the right way to naturally end it. I didn't know, I didn't expect her to be with the Ravagers. That was interesting. Yeah, Stallone was in it for, like, two minutes. Yeah. They said he was coming back, and they were acting like it was going to be, like, a big Right, it was like, oh, Sylvester Stallone. And then he just, not like, he doesn't do much time he's in the movies. He's done more as a shark than he's done in any of his movies. He was great as King Shark. He was.
It was really good. Yeah. James Gunn knows how to just like make actors good, even if they're like bad in a lot. Of stuff. Oh yeah. Like fucking Star Wars. Really good. Really yeah, actor just, friendly. Just think of Chris Pratt and like Passengers, and I think like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you just reminded me of Passengers. Or like the Magnificent, Magnificent Seven, or whatever the fuck that was. I can't believe you reminded me of that. Oh my gosh. He was also in that what, movie 43. That Wasn't horrible that? comedy. Wasn't yeah. Like, yeah, like. There was also like 30 directors. <laughs> yeah, including James Gunn. It wasn't the idea that that was like 43 directors for like, like 40 like, little short films. Yeah. And they're like, all like, were together. Yeah. It's just a bunch of like terrible YouTube clips. Yeah. Yeah. Which is actors in it. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's the movie where Chris Pratt like has his like crap all over the windshield of that car. Anyway, <laughs> he's gonna Chris be Pratt's, he's gonna be Garfield. Chris Pratt has quite the career. He also said like they say like Star Wars gonna come back, but then Chris Pratt said like I don't know if I want to come back without James Gunn, but like we'll see. Yeah, it's like the legendary Star Lord will return. It's like when they did the end of Thor: Love and Thunder. Then they say Thor will return. And then he was like, wait, what? Yeah, I, I will. Out he has like a predisposition for like Alzheimer's, so he's like, I'm not gonna act anymore. Yeah. But then he's like, you want to do extraction too? And he's like, I think I got one more. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more in me. <laughs> Did you watch Extraction? No. I, I, I've like I've not, not met a single person that's seen it, but apparently it was like one of Netflix's like biggest movies ever. A lot of Netflix's biggest movies, I've just never even heard of. Like I saw Red Notice. I saw I Red Notice. Cry. It was terrible. I went to it cry. was so bad. And I think they're making like two more. Of Red Notice? They said they were going to make a trilogy out of it. They had Murder Mystery 2 come out this year. Yeah, I saw Ali watching that, and I saw like 10 minutes of it, and like I'd rather like show like a little fork in my eye <laughs> than finish it. <laughs> like, I don't know if the first one's good. No. Wasn't it also Netflix? Yeah. What was it? They also did the do over. I'm sorry, but Adam like, Sandler I, and I've been watching David Spence too. Like, why does anybody like Jennifer Aniston? I don't know. Like, I'm legitimately asking. <laughs> like, she's not charming. She's not like cool. She's uh, not, like anything. I think just a lot of guys find her. In real life, probably. she's also annoying. She called, yeah. She said Friends is offensive to the, like today's generation. I was like, in any well, conceivable how? way, you're wrong. How does How does that make any sense? Like, I get it. You're in it, but. <laughs> At least it isn't as bad as Gwyneth Paltrow. Like, after Iron Man, she oh started like, selling her vagina and candles. Like, I don't know. She's horrible. I hate Gwyneth Paltrow. She's also not that good of an actor. No, she... Yeah, I was no. surprised she turned out any good performance in those Marvel movies, but... Like, at all. Yeah. Even sometimes it wasn't good. No. I think she was good in the first Iron Man. She like, was actually solid. good. Like, yeah, she was solid. I don't know, there's the rest. She was, it was an endgame. Not very much, but she was fine when she was there, I guess. The rest of her role was just stop being Iron Man. Pretty much. And around yeah. at the end, she's like, actually, I can't stop you. So and then he killed himself. <laughs> I. Am there was that funny scene in this movie where they just like summarize stuck. Endgame from the Guardians' perspective in that elevator. Yeah. And it was like hilarious. I could like tell James Gunn was writing that, and he was just like really frustrated, <laughs> and he's just like getting mad at all these things that they did. And then he's like, you know, I can't wait to leave for DC. Yeah, I'm not really excited for Superman Legacy yet, but I am excited that he's just, making it, because I don't know what he's going to do. I love it has to be vastly different than what he's been doing with comic book movies. Yeah, I mean, I love James Gunn, but I just don't like Superman media, ever, so I don't know, we'll see. I can tell he loves the character, so yeah, I, can, I know it'll probably be really good. Probably, yeah. I mean, I'll definitely give it a it chance. It might be the best Superman so. movie ever. It's definitely it's very, likely it's very likely, because... I, I only consider, like, one Superman movie to be even, like, good. Man of Steel's fine. The original Superman's, like, fine. solid. Pretty much everything in between kind of sucks. Superman 2 is okay. 3 and 4 are fucking... 3 and 4 are awful. So awful. I watched those when I was, like, 8, and even then I was, like... Superman Returns is also awful. That's Brandon Routh. I, I recently... I was watching, like, Superman like, 3, and I was like, why is this rich guy on a fucking giant building? It was just, like, a fucking, like, avalanche of snow. Like, like I even remember that, like vividly because he throws Richard Pryor down it and I'm yeah. like what the fuck is this <laughs> Superman 3 sucks and Superman 4 is like you know what I'm gonna make the worst I am Superman 4 friends. the quest for peace oh that's why they call it the... <laughs> is that a family guy joke? yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow wow wubsy what was they did like a sketch once where it was like gay jaws yeah, it's like gay. It's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, I had half a server for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you won't be too much though. <laughs> like, oh. 
Hey, job. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? The fucking 9 11 one where Peter Bigger first jaws. saw it and he's like, ha, ha, that's what a woman pilot. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> I've noticed a lot of memes online now are just about like 9 11. It's just like anything where in media where something is flying and then it just shows them hitting the twins. It's playing 9 11 in Minecraft terms. Have you not seen that one? Where oh. Has the AI and it's like somebody grifted the server. <laughs> Something with TNT blocks on the building. <laughs> One, two, back to you. Jesus Christ. And they also brought back those people from the second one, the gold people. For like 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. It's like a little bit. And they brought back those monsters, they, the batteries, the harbulary batteries. Yeah. yeah. The harbulary bat. They're called harbulary batteries. No, they're not! <laughs> 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 Yeah, I love Chris Pratt's delivery on that. He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, no, they're not. Stop. <laughs> it's even funnier because it's the second time. Because the first time he's like, and he likes batteries. He's like, harbulary batteries. Like, that is nothing like what I just said. He's like, they're called harbulary batteries. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and then he calls Rocket a trash well, There's also that really funny one where he's like, why are these people chasing us? Because they all like come out at him. Yeah. And he's like, and Drax and me is like it's probably because Rocket stole the batteries and like why why would you do that and he's like why would you snitch on me he's like never mind he didn't do that uh, it's such a mystery I don't know why they're chasing after <laughs> he's like never mind I have no idea why <laughs> like, he's, why he, are they he's so this? he's so funny in the third one too when he goes, he's like going to talk to the kids he's like hello dumb idiots he's <laughs> like I'm gonna start making monkey noises and he starts making like chicken noises yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'd make monkey noises like <laughs> hello small idiots <laughs> hello dumb idiots <laughs> It's like, hey, moron, <laughs> you're doing a good job. <laughs> it's like, what? And then he just, like, speaks their language. It's like, why didn't you say that you spoke their language? It's like, why didn't you ask? <laughs> that made that funny. That made me, like, I, I was kind of, like, so, like, Mantis can't, can, like, get a translation on a bunch of languages, but she can't get this one, but Drax can speak it. But then they made a joke, and I was like, all right, that's fun. <laughs> I'm okay with it. There's a really funny one, too, that you were talking about, where it's like, does anybody have tape? Yes, scotch tape would do. Why would you <laughs> ask if you don't have it? <laughs> yeah, he's like, look, asking everybody for tape, and then he's like, Trax, do you have tape? Yes, scotch tape would work. Well, why would you ask if you didn't have any? <laughs> so, like, Groot just takes it. And away. Yeah. And he's like, okay, so if he doesn't accidentally blow us all up, so, yeah, like, five minutes. If he doesn't kill all of us, we have about five minutes. <laughs> If he doesn't blow us all to bits. <laughs> that was funny. Um, name's Rocket. Rocket Raccoon. That was a good moment. Yeah. He, because that was the thing with all three of them. He kept calling himself not a raccoon. Yeah, man. That was cool that they used the gravity boost that they like talked about for a tiny bit at the beginning. They like brought that back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the scenes with Rocket were probably my favorite. Except like he was also like... That was, like, mainly his story in this one, because he was also, like, almost dead for, like, the first two hours. Yeah. <laughs> to, like, the last, like, 40 minutes. Right, yeah. He was, like, literally dying for most of it. Yeah, but, um... What else is there to say? I don't know what my MCU ranking is anymore. I haven't seen some of the newer ones, either. I know that my entire top six is all Avengers and Guardians. I know yeah. that. Because <laughs> I haven't seen the new am and I did not see the last Black Panther. I know both of those were... The last Black Panther was like a 5. The new Ant-Man's like a low 4. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I just got on Disney Plus, too. Yeah. Everybody's like, I will not be finishing my Ant-Man collection. Ant-Man collection? Really? Did you like, uh... I know how much you probably love Modoc in that movie. I was okay with it. Are you really? Yeah. Like... I know that's like everybody's biggest complaint. Like, if you're gonna do it in live action, I guess... Sure. I mean, they're probably giving it much better ways. Yeah, like they actually sat down and like actually wrote a competent script. Oh yeah. Uh, what, what are you gonna do? It definitely could have been a lot better. But I was I, just like, I was like, Modok is such a ridiculous character that I'm not gonna get too mad over it. I was kind of confused why they didn't even do that. I was like, you're already doing Kang. Like, why even do Modok? Yeah, mechanized organism designed only for killing. Because they keep doing that. They keep bringing in characters that people like really like and just like killing them off. Like yeah. Taskmaster. What was that? Yeah, that seriously. Was the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> I hate Blackwood. It was, it was so, so bad. stupid. Blackwood was t- terrible. Not only because I saw it with Jasmine, but <laughs> they played like a Nirvana song at the beginning. And it was completely unrelated because it was literal child torture happening. They just put a Nirvana song. It's just not that good. 
Yeah. Also, it was like six years too late. Yeah. Because it should have came out like fucking like 2014 or something. Oh, like every movie. <laughs> yeah. Every movie that came out in 2021 like feels like a little bit better because it was released in the same year as Space Jam: A New Legacy. So like it makes the all the other ones look a little bit better. It did come out. Yeah. What happened to Space Jam? Didn't it make, like, no money? I hope not. <laughs> if it did make money, Because that upset. was the year Warner Brothers, like, killed all their movies because they did the same-day streaming thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what they're doing with the FNAF movie. Yeah, it's really seen in theaters and on Peacock. Like, why? For what reason? Definitely Saw 10 is the priority. Yeah. Those are coming out the same day, aren't they? Yeah. yeah I asked Allie that, and she was like, neither. I was like, you don't want to see FNAF? <laughs> neither. I mean, I'm going to Saw 10. I'm also going to FNAF. Same day. Maybe. I might pull a freaking Oppenheimer or Barbie situation. That's why I did with Tag and Incredibles 2. <laughs> the fucking... Really? The fucking plot for Space Jam 2 is a sentence. <laughs> a world of artificial intelligence kidnaps the son of famed basketball player LeBron James, who then has to work with Bugs Bunny to win a basketball game. No context. <laughs> That's the plot. <laughs> I would cry if I read that. <laughs> it would be so bad. Might be the worst thing ever. So it made $163 million worldwide. That's upsettingly much. What was its budget? I don't think it made a profit. I sure hope not. Because yeah, it was also on HBO Max, but I really hope it was not. Can't believe I saw that in the theater. Yeah, it did not make money. <laughs> oh my gosh! That doesn't even include. That doesn't include marketing. marketing. Yeah, no, and there was a lot of marketing for that movie too, which I is the really upsetting part. It to be. It somehow was a twenty-five from critics, and an eighty from audience. What? <laughs> did you saw this movie? Freaking Matt Pat's video Lord? about like the difference in the critic response and the audience response. <laughs> Fast X gonna be incredible. No. And the only way I would see that movie in theaters is if someone like pay for me to see it. And I'm not saying. Because um, I don't want to waste my money. Yeah. It's no. also like two and a half hours. Yeah. No. Like, why do they keep making them longer? <laughs> and you stop. And they're like, okay, we'll do one more. It'll be a two part finale. And he's like, the studio saw what we made. They somehow were on so much opioids and alcohol. They said it was good. So we might get a third one. <laughs> Let's go. Otherwise known as the 12th installment. We're going to make it also a prequel Dom story. It's the at before the first one. I remember in F9 about when, like. <laughs> When like they had like the younger version of Dominic Toretto, that just looked way like, different from Vin Diesel. Yeah, he also like, had hair. He's not that much younger. He's like ten years younger than this. Yeah, it's like what? It's like maybe fifteen years younger. And like John Cena was just like the guy that Some they actually kind of looked like John Cena a little bit. It was a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but they also tried to tell you that Vin Diesel and John Cena they were brothers. Brothers. <laughs> I hate that movie. It really sucks. Do you remember the fucking uh, stupid fucking? Uh, Explanation for how Han was alive, how stupid it was. Not really. No, I kind of blanked that movie. They out. like fucking like, like deposit like fucking composited like characters from like the like newer movies like into the scene from the third one, to like make it so he snuck out of the car right when it exploded. Jason Statham didn't see anyone else at the scene. Fucking like Kurt Russell switched him out for like a fake body, and then exploded. And then Jason Statham just walks away. Doesn't see any of this. And they, like, drive off. And there was that whole dumb plot where he had, like, that child with him. With the magnets. Like, I'm just... I'm remembering this movie now. Like, live. So stupid. Guardians? <laughs> Let's get back to good movies. I find it's freaking terrible. Um, the no, Fast Saga. Um, it's an incredible trilogy. It's probably the best modern... Like, has there been a good trilogy in a while of movies? I would say it's definitely the best Marvel trilogy. I mean, I yeah. liked I liked the newer Spider Man trilogy. I just I do have problems with each of those movies. Yeah, they're pretty big. Right, and yeah. I'd say these are consistently like great. I'd give them all a great to good, like good, very good to great rating. I'm trying to think of like a modern trilogy that's been good. Yeah, it's I, really don't even, I don't even know. Halloween could have. Could have it definitely could've. failed too though. Could have definitely failed. I mean, Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess if you count the Avengers, like four movies, I guess. 
I mean, if you cut out Age of Ultron... <laughs> you have a good trilogy. <laughs> yeah. But then that movie's so important. Yeah, that's the problem. Cause it's, it's so essential. It kind of sucks, but it's very important. This is an Avengers movie. Yeah. Matrix 4? I'm just kidding. I forgot that came out. I unfortunately saw that. I haven't seen the first one yet. You haven't seen The Matrix? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> Dude, the list is getting too long. You gotta watch. I need to watch John summer. Wick as well. You gotta watch movies this summer. You have to. Of okay. course. You have to. No, Buy you me. have to. Write me a list. I got a massive list for you. Have you seen Schindler's List? No. It's going on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I, just uh, wa- I also just watched the Seinfeld episode the other day where like Jerry and his girlfriend like go to Schindler's List and they make out and then like her, his parents find out and, sh- and they're just like, "You were making out during Schindler's List." With a Jewish girl? <laughs> it's like... Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway. Did you watch the fucking Meg 2 trailer? No. It looks so stupid. I avoided it. It looks so bad. I can't believe the Meg 2 is happening. I was just curious what like they were going to like put in it. There's a scene where Jason Statham stops a Megalodon. Let me say this again. A Megalodon. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Jason Statham <laughs> stops a Megalodon from eating him with his foot. Like, he puts his foot on the shark and it stops. <laughs> <laughs> new chum <laughs> no way I'm gonna remind you the books are actually like realistic yeah and like good <laughs> when did the Meg come out 2018 like, like four 19? or five years ago it was a long time ago <laughs> I'm surprised they made another one. Oh my gosh um I can't decide between Guardians 2 or 3 which one I like better I love them both and I, I, I love them all two of my I want all the still books movies, are, are there good still books I don't know I've, I haven't actually looked I feel like there's ones. I should for sure there's gotta be right if there's if there's ones with like the mixtape volumes as the, like the oh, yeah. covers and the third one's the zoom I'll buy all three right oh, now oh yeah 100% I would immediately buy that I would go online and buy it right um but as a trilogy it's it's gotta be one of the it's gotta be the best in mo- the modern era I can't think of another one um yeah not the Star Wars trilogy <laughs> not a like, lot of them messed up at like the last one I'm trying to think of like yeah. any of them that I like kinda liked Planet of the Apes trilogy is okay it's just not on this level though. James Gunn really, really killed it with these, and everybody else that worked on it. A lot of great, a lot of great filmmakers there at work. Um, what the fuck is this? Really, really good stuff. I, 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 it's gonna take me a bit to decide if I like two or three better. I'm gonna have to rewatch three, cause I love two, but I, I, three was just it. It really got me in the feels. Rocket's my favorite character, so I was really happy to experience that. Um. In general, I'd probably give the first one a 7, high 7. I'd give the second one about an 8, and i give this new one an 8. Uh, it's my favorite movie of the year so far. I don't, I don't think it'll stay that way, but um, it'll definitely be near the top, because it's, it's it's very good. Yeah, there's not many steelbooks. Actually, well, there's a volume 1 one that is the mixtape, and then there is a volume 2 one where it's grew with the explosives. <laughs> think do not push. It's $80, though. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Can't have shit in Quebec. Canada? Yeah. Can't have shit. Can't have shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker stole my toilet. Can't shit in Detroit. Fucker stole Detroit. Can't have Detroit. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other things to talk about in this movie. Um, I love Mantis and Drax together. Like, those two actors... Yeah, they're man, really good Mantis comedically. Because they're growing yeah. character got much better, and they're a great duo. I like that. That was a good moment too, because Nebula was like ripping into both of them, and then the way Mantis was like, like I don't care if Drax is stupid. And he's like he's funny. He makes us laugh, and he's the only one of us that doesn't hate himself. And I was like, oh damn, <laughs> digging into it. Yeah, and they finally made him a dad at the end, which I didn't expect. Oh, yeah. But I did like that. That was good. I know Batista very passionately does not want to come back. Yeah. Which I don't blame him. No, yeah, not at all. Fall that makeup. And it is a pretty simple role. It sounds like he does want to do more um, art stuff, kind of. I may need a glass onion. If you count the Shyamalan movie that is art. Um, yeah. I guess it's a more complicated role, though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he was good on that. I heard the whole movie was pretty bad. That movie was bad, but he was probably the best part of it, honestly. If I'm being like unironically, it was probably the best part. Yeah, and I haven't seen Knives Out or Glass Onion, so I have. Is Glass Onion good? It's okay. 
It's nowhere near as good as Knives Out. I know a lot of people are like kept saying like they couldn't choose. Yeah, no, I definitely can choose Knives Out. I was like, Out doesn't Edward Norton play like a weird social media billionaire? I think it's pretty obvious. They do play so. Among Us in, uh, in Glass Onion, so. <laughs> I can't tell you when movies do that because it's just going to become so dated. Like, and if I watch Endgame now with Fortnite in it, I already feel dated. Oh, yeah. Like, what? Somebody was like, if, 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 because it's 2023 now, like, if Fortnite does not look like it did in Endgame, I'm going back and giving it a half star. <laughs> For not being realistic. <laughs> There's like, there was like a whole movement about it. Like everybody's like, on Letterboxd, we're all going to change it. Infinity War's going to go down to like a half star. It's like, no, let's not do that. <laughs> That's just cruel. Yeah, didn't uh, this movie also get like the highest um, Letterboxd rating, I think? Out of a lot. Like, it was like the one of the highest oh, Marvel rated movies ever. Yeah, I think it's... It still, has like a 4.2 or something. I think it's still in the top 250, which is like a pretty big deal. Top 250 narrative films. So. I'm a creep. I'm a creep. <laughs> oh, that hallway scene at the end, too, with Brooklyn. That's oh, one. Yeah. That was great. No sleep till. Yeah, I wrote in my review. I was like, this is a big year for No Sleep Till Brooklyn being featured in film. Because it was in Guardians 3. It was also in the Super Mario Bros. movie. Was film. it really? I don't. Which part was it at? That, like, opening scene where they're like, oh, we have our first plumbing job. We have to go. But their van doesn't start, so they have to run. Oh, that. And then they plays No Sleep Till Brooklyn, and it's like, this is... Unneeded. Stupid. Because I feel like I heard they also had, uh... They had, like, actual, like, Mario music for those scenes. Yeah. Unreleased. That yeah. Illumination put in pop music, music and, like, old songs. Which is songs. a stupid idea. That's what Illumination does. The more I sit on that movie, the more I'm like, man, this movie sucked. But, like, I love Mario, so... This is the problem with the country, but I'm, I'm not a part of it. But I love Mario, so it's not... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Marvel. Oh um, yeah, that's probably all to say. I'd give it an eight. I really loved it. It's gonna be one of my favorite movies of this year for sure. The only ones that might top. I would give it like a four out of ten, ever. but it did have animal abuse in it, so it immediately helps up to a nine. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a way to put it. Oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, my boss is a big DC fan, and he has like a Green Lantern ring yeah. on his arm. Yeah. And he was just talking about how much he liked DC. I and mean, he was like, and he's like, yeah, I like both, but like Marvel movies aren't that good. I was about to be like, really? Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern, so, really that good, huh? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> DC movies. Like, like Green Lantern. <laughs> it's like, I love my Green Lantern content, the content in question. Oh my god. Well, do you want to talk about the next thing? Maybe not kill ourselves? Yeah, I, we talked about it at one point. I don't remember where you were at. I think you said you like were almost done. Um, I think so. It was funny because I talked to Andrew the other day, and he's also been watching all of it, and he was at the same spot you were the last time I asked you where you were, and you're like, oh, I only have like two episodes left. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, um, better call Saul. Can I like text Saul? Email maybe? Leave him a message. Yeah, did you like the show overall when you finished it? Uh, yes. Uh, and do you like it more than Breaking Bad? Do I like it more than Breaking Bad? It's kind of, it's it's tough because I'm maybe, but it, it, to me it made Breaking Bad better. And like, yeah, they both make each other a lot better. Yeah, and it's like, I, don't, I think that Breaking Bad is a slightly better show. Slightly. Um, I think maybe as a drama. Better Call Saul might be a bit. Uh, yeah, they're really better. close. They're both just really good. I just kind of lump them together because I watched them. It's like, kind of a whole thing, line. yeah. Yeah, and like they complement each other so well, and I think that they're just perfect companion pieces to each other. And like, just at like from a storytelling perspective, they're nearly perfect all the way through from the beginning of Breaking Bad to the end of Better Call Saul. I know, well, yeah, but like, like I just think it's so. Yeah, so I know. There's a lot of discourse about the first two seasons being pretty slow and uh, not enough. Uh, just not as good as compared to say Breaking Bad um, but I feel like from season 3 to the end of season 6 it is almost better than Breaking Bad and sometimes I even question which one I like more and overall after like I finish everything I do like the first two seasons so, like I will say that they're very rewatchable shows and I, I do think I get more out of them the more I see them yeah, just because when I when I would watch it with Allie, sometimes I'd catch episodes and uh, rewatch them. 
Yeah. I'd like them more. Yeah. Um, did you like did you like how they ended it with Eric Saul? Like with where they ended the character and stuff? Um from yeah, from a storytelling standpoint. Is it what you expected? Uh, kind of. I didn't expect them to like uh I guess I just I didn't expect how much time we spent in like the post breaking bed and like black and white stuff. Yeah. Which is coincidentally just like the, the you know like the huge shift like it just kind of took with when they went to the gene stuff yeah yeah the last season of Barry does that too so be prepared oh really it does that like right in the middle oh okay yeah uh, it's also really good though so okay yeah but um I'm trying to like remember everything because it's been a while yeah I've cons- I've, I consume a lot of media so I'm trying to like because like it's pretty heavy stuff like Better Call Saul is like uh did you like Lalo yeah yeah I thought the acting was amazing yeah incredible performance yeah yeah like absolutely incredible well I mean every and I loved his I loved his uh rivalry of Gus I loved Chuck even though he was a big villain yeah it's very interesting when you like actually dig deeper into it there's a lot of interesting questions those shows bring up um I really liked Kim did you like Kim I, I, like I, lo- I liked him. I liked their I relationship. Like yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, def- I thought that was a good dynamic. Um, it was definitely enjoyable for the most part. Yeah, um, I loved the court scene at the end. Um, the fact that he was able to talk down what was it like an eighty-seven year prison sentence down to seven. Yeah, it was insane. I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. that and then he even like got, got to talk them down and give him ice cream every week in prison. <laughs> Like, he's a really good lawyer. Like, yeah, really good. You, gotta call, you gotta call him. Give him a call. <laughs> he's in prison. Well, yeah, but, like, he's still... And it was, it was, I thought it was a really good story choice where it was almost like when he was in prison, it almost was, it was less of a prison than him faking his life in the Cinnabon. Yeah. Because that was more of a prison than anything. Right. Which they even did a nice, I love, I love all, like, this, I love the cinematography and, like, how much the camera... Is like a character in both these shows. Oh yeah, it, it, it's an underrated aspect. I think the way that um, like the thing with uh, Walter when like he was punching the thing in the bathroom, that was great. There was also the one of Jimmy kicking the trash can at the beginning of season one, and then at the end of season six, uh, they finally fixed the trash can. <laughs> like yeah. it was just little <laughs> stuff like that they do. Yeah. And even when he's in prison, the first thing they show is him baking stuff in prison. Butter corn salt. Yeah, um, I really like how they handled the Breaking Bad connections. Like it wasn't too heavy handed. Like obviously Mike and Gus were main characters, but I significantly like them more after it. Oh yeah, especially Mike. Especially Mike. I love Mike. Like when you t- when we were watching Better Call Saul, I was like, I really like Mike as a character. Or Breaking Bad. I, like, I, I, I together. That won't. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I really like Mike as a character. You were like, just wait till Better Call Saul. Yeah, his his standalone episode in the first season was was probably the best episode of that season. His backstory with the son, I, yeah. I love that. Especially seeing him like like break down, yeah, and like cry. What uh, incredible! That was incredible. Yeah, so in that the storyline of him, the German scientist, I think it's season four, because I love the underground lab stuff. I didn't think they would explore that. Yeah, but like when I really th- like it started to think about bringing about it, really like need like a lot more explaining than it did yeah just being there it, yeah, definitely, and i love them it showing it sense, being yeah. built and stuff i really appreciated that how they how it like it makes it build it's really the back. perfect prequel yeah i it, think it, it's really if that if you're gonna like do a prequel to something i think you should watch better Call Saul. yeah well i'm breaking bad obviously right. but, um like because breaking bad is already such a great show like one of the best i've ever seen and it's really funny seeing cool the headlines because there's headlines when the show got announced in like 2012 or whatever yeah. that they're doing a Better Call Saul prequel show and people are like this has got a flop Bob Odenkirk cannot carry a show this is a terrible idea right, why then, would you ever do anything with Breaking Bad maybe even arguably like better than Breaking Bad yeah which they said the same thing about El Camino too which I don't love El Camino but it's fine it's part of the experience it's just like another episode really it's just a movie yeah. length right yeah if you really like Jesse it's really good which I really like Jesse yeah. so but all the actors are great Absolutely. Yeah, they're incredible. Brian Cranston is Cranston. definitely is, is, is it's his it's what he'll be known for. Yeah, forever. Hundred percent. Same like, with Bob Odenkirk. Like, the, the, like, and he did such a good job. Like, that's definitely deserved. Like, I mean, even he's admitted it himself. Yeah. He's like roles just don't come around that much like that. 
Um, right. And Bob Odenkirk's talk about himself. You know, when he did play the lawyer, the funny lawyer guy in Breaking Bad, he thought that was it. Yeah. But then they told him to do this, and he was really nervous. But it was just such a but great it, journey for him. It, yeah. He also had a heart attack in season six. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. I remember when that happened. Uh, that was um, like when that news broke. They had a heart attack. That I was like, Jesus Christ! The whole production of this entire thing. Um, but it still turned out great. I mean, it's just such a, it's such a great show, just in general. Um, yeah, there's just so much to it. Um, really, the performances are absolutely incredible. I don't remember all the actors' names, but yeah, Gus, Gus's role in the show. I already liked Gus as a character, um, but it definitely made him even better, uh, watching Better Call Saul. Um, and it makes me love just both shows so much. Um, it's not like they're, like, my favorite shows of all time. Um, there's definitely, like, like there, there are other shows that I just connect with more personally, but, like, from a storytelling perspective and, like, from beginning to end, you look at everything, like, with, like, with characters and all that. Um, Breaking Bad... Fabulous show and Better Call Saul, fabulous prequel, fabulous show in its but in its own, and the way it all compares together, it's just it, it makes it one whole, just it, absolutely immaculate story, and I and I just love it the way, the way it's presented, it's all done so well, um, just super impressive, and I and I strive to make make something that good one day. Obviously, I'm more of a film guy, but uh, in like a t in like a TV perspective. It uh, it doesn't get much better than these two shows. You know what I mean? What were you saying? I said a lot. Just like basically, from a TV perspective, it doesn't get much better than just all of this coming together from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. But fanboy and chump chump. I right, take this. I'm not. I'm done. <laughs> Do it yourself. Um. How did you like um, how they incorporated Jesse and Walt in the last season? It was fine. Yeah, I thought it filled in some of the gaps. Obviously, it wasn't like necessary. Yeah, at first, I thought it was really gonna kind of feel forced. But like, it was but, pretty well done. It was, yeah. For like having them make an appearance, it was probably the best way they could have done it. Also. I really liked the Kim and Jesse scene. I didn't think they'd do that. Um, yeah. And the final scene with Walt and Saul in the basement. Mm, yeah. It was pretty heartbreaking. Because, like, if you just watch it as a Breaking Bad fan, it doesn't really hit hard. But, like, just after watching, like, f- six seasons of Better Call Saul. Right. To, like, see the main character of Breaking Bad just talk so down to this character you, like, have now understood. Right. Um, it really put, it, 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 it puts a really All the flashbacks of that last episode were all great. Um, yeah. The Chuck one was good. Mm. The Mike one was great. I really love that episode too, where they're on the desert together. Oh yeah! At the end of season five. Oh yeah, incredible. that's incredible a great episode. episode. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's what I meant. They even have like those small details, like uh, Mike has like space blankets that like Chuck would wear, but yeah. like obviously he doesn't know that. And like he's like they don't like like talk about it or anything, but like you see Jimmy's reaction to just seeing them, and it's just like little things like that. Like a lot of shows don't do. Right. Yeah. Or just anything. And that really, really, that really elevates. That like, really good writers. Yeah. Like they knew, like yeah. they knew what they were doing, and they clearly they had they had a great vision, and they they made it, they expressed it in such a well done way. It's just so impressive. Yeah. When's the next show? You mean uh, better resuscitate Mike? It makes his death a lot sadder. Yeah. Because I also. Uh, because, like, in Better Breaking Bad, they didn't really show him with his granddaughter much. They didn't even show his daughter-in-law, I don't think. No, not really. Yeah, so actually seeing him with his family for, like, a whole show, and then, like, him supporting his family in the whole next show, just to die, it was pretty sad. Um, those are brought back. Marie? Your favorite character? In, like, the last episode? Yeah, I didn't... I was like, oh, really? <laughs> Which I thought she she gave a good performance. It was just like, I, I didn't expect that. Yeah, and like, um, it was fine. Look in the context of like, what happened. I, oh, I was super shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> they didn't bring back Bill Burr, unfortunately. No. Um, that would have been cool. Yeah. Did you hear fucking uh, 
Guillermo del Toro cameos in the final season of Barry. He does? Apparently he loves Barry, and he just like, asked Bill Hader one day, he's like, hey, can I be in your show? And Bill Hader was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Come over. <laughs> we'll hang out. We'll, we'll talk about your scene. Yeah, Bill, that, Bur- Bill Burr also cameos, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I heard about that. In season four. Yeah. yeah. I did not hear about Guillermo del Toro, though. What? <laughs> yeah, actually, he's in one of the early episodes, and I didn't realize it because he's like dressed a certain way and like he talks different but then like I saw a picture I was like oh my god because he wasn't wearing glasses either and you know, I just like I'm always used to wear glasses yeah that's true being like a fat little nice guy so weird I can't imagine like Yoma Del Toro just being like hey can I be in your show I love it and then Bill H- and then Bill freaking Hater who made this incredible show was just like yeah of course <laughs> what? this is so weird to think about so crazy to think about some like people out in the entertainment world and what incredible things they can really do well Bill Hader has also said after Barry he's already working on movies like he has scripts he has three scripts that are being like optioned at studios and one of them's a horror movie that he would direct yeah that I'm really interested to see that because yeah. he, he's shown that he's got great storytelling potential and great just well yeah he also directed the entirety of season four too. yeah yeah and I saw the first two episodes and they were very good so I'm excited to see the rest see how it really shapes out so yeah it's nice to have good shows I, I used to not watch shows much but I can't afford to go to the movies anymore. Yeah, I still much prefer to watch movies, but, like, a good show is just... A lot of movies are also not good now. Also, there's a writer's strike, and it's just... Yeah. It's okay, though. Phineas and Ferb is coming back, so everything is okay. Yeah, they were talking about the writer's strike. It's like, guys, it's okay. They can still make Superman Legacy because James Gunn just turned the script in. And I was like, that's the least of my concerns. Like, these people aren't being paid. <laughs> right. Like, this and people are like, but my movies! <laughs> a serious thing. It's like, like it's almost like it's the point. Yeah. Well, I heard some studios are considering using AI now to write scripts and then just hiring a writer to revise it. I really hope not. So they'll stop complaining about how they're being paid. It's just like, what writer would do that? I really I wouldn't not. do that. I wouldn't be like, oh, a robot wrote this. Can you revise it's it? It's not everything, man. I really hope that this doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not liking AI anymore. Just I didn't the, really the like it anymore. Anyway. AI taking over creative liberties and creative jobs is like... One of the worst things. I knew when they AI started making art. the fucking AI generated art, it was just going to be a whole thing. Yeah. Just fucking. Because then it becomes the whole debate is like, is it art? Like, did you watch the new South Park season? Did yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't episode? think that I, that Chad GPT episode was really good, but I did not think it would happen so quickly. Yeah. Usually it takes like a few years for stuff at South Park to happen, but like the shit with the Queen already happened. Yeah. And the shit with the Chad GPT. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like there's other stuff too. I mean, they had Andrew Tate in it, um, for some reason. I mean, that, that was a big issue for them, because it was, because, like, with Trey Parker, he was, like, as soon as he started to see all this stuff, he was, like, like, if AI starts to take over, like, writing for TV and movies, I will put a bullet in my brain. I was like, oh, cool. Live reaction. Interesting to see how you feel about that. Can you expand upon it? No? Okay. Do you want to talk about the FNAF trailer real quick? I guess we could. It's 48 seconds. Yeah, it was more of a teaser. Yeah, it is. And they also yeah. released the poster. Uh, for some reason. What is a teaser? I always thought a teaser trailer was like, it like just showed a clip of the movie, maybe slightly edited. But a like, teaser trailer, I guess, is just like a teaser for the trailer, which is just like a shortened trailer. Yeah, but like some, it's like, it's like teaser trailer, and it's like three minutes long, and I'm like, what? Yeah, I didn't watch it, but I don't know if you saw, but uh, I saw somebody on Twitter complaining about it, because... Uh, they released the final trailer for Fast X. Guess how long it was? It was like a four and a half minute long trailer. For a trailer? Yeah, I was like, fuck, bro. I ain't watching all that. Then I knew I wasn't seeing the movie for sure. <laughs> Gosh, dude, that's like a... That's like a Which half of it was movie. just uh, Brie Larson, I guess, his character being uh, told like the whole history of the, like all the movies. I was like, okay, that makes sense. That'd be like five hours yeah that'd be a little too much just be like so then we went to Tokyo for a bit but this is actually eight years in the future but it was May 2006 so everything looks like 2006 but this actually takes place in 2012 canonically nobody has smartphones it's all using the Blackberries with like the keyboard that yeah. comes out of the phone <laughs> like oh so advanced bro look at this 2006 car this is 2012 material <laughs> I fucking hate Fast and Furious what is that franchise your mother no Anyway, Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming out the same day as it's Saw kind 10. Of, kind of a stacked cast. I mean, they got fucking... They have a lot of people in there. The guy from Hunger Games is the security guard. Yep. Matthew Lillard's purple guy. Mm. Can't wait for that. Oh, yeah. That'll be great. 
The only worrying thing was that it's going to be PG-13. Yeah, it's like, what? It's like, I want to see child murder. I want Springlock scenes. I know you do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the animatronics <laughs> look very accurate. I wasn't sure if they were going to There was people complaining bit, but... that they look fan-made. I was like, you know what they're aiming for, right? <laughs> like, Jim Henson made these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're made to be cheap Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. Of course, they're going to look cheap. Exactly, like that's the. You point. wanted the movie. You asked for this. <laughs> you asked for the movie. <laughs> My brother in Christ, you made the sandwich. There's just that the story is just so convoluted. I, I'm just like I'm confused on what they're gonna like do. Yeah, I don't know if they're planning. Because there's also they're bringing in a Vanessa character as like another like security guard who is from Security Breach. Which, yeah, Security Breach, which is like seems like they're bringing stuff in like every game. Right. But then it's like some of the games. It's just like it, there's just it's too complicated. There's way too much. I don't understand. I would just I I what I would imagine is that like the since they said they're doing a trilogy, I thought it'd just be like the first three games. Yeah. But then Matthew Lillard in an interview made it sound like the first three games are all in the first movie. Like, kind of just, like, timeline-wise. Which didn't make any sense. I think he just... I think he's just an actor and doesn't understand because he hasn't watched all of Matt Pat's videos. So he just, yeah. he just mis- said his words. Probably, yeah. Because he doesn't fucking care. He I just, just don't understand how narratively, like, they're gonna... Like, obviously, like, it's already... I'm pretty sure they said... Happened, but... The plot synopsis or whatever is that in there's going to be like a flashback storyline about the place when it was actually open but like the security guard stuff with the guy from Hunger Games is like in modern ish times and the place is closed down and he's just like guarding the place but then there's also the big story thing where it's like in the games it's like you can't like not go the next night but like this guy could just not go the next night like why is he staying for five nights <laughs> yeah so like, what, like what, what's the story reason I don't understand I'm, I don't understand I mean I guess it's gonna come out it's probably not gonna be very good but <laughs> I'm hoping I mean, but they did make this really fast yeah like insanely fast like when it was like oh yeah uh, announcement's coming out this October I was like what it's coming out this October it's coming out like, next year after like five years of talking about it it's finally gonna come out it's actually been ten years because that game's almost ten years old and they, like, announced it, like, recently-ish. Like, they weren't even done with the main games before they announced the movie. It's so weird to think that the original game, that the original game is, like, ten years old. Yes. What are you doing? Chilling before Allie called her. Um, would you want to go to a metaphysical fair this weekend? Where they, like, read the palms and all that crazy shit? I got free tickets from Bobby. She's not using I work all weekend. Would Allie want to do it with a friend or something, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Where's it at? I don't know. Where are those tickets? Uh, no, I don't know. Like, where's this place now? It's in Des Moines. I don't know. I'm sure they have tickets. So. You got to work all weekend. Do you work tomorrow? No. Oh. Friday night. Woo! All right. We're going to go look at Tile. We'll be back. It's really weird to think about how uh, <laughs> the first uh, Five Nights at Freddy's game was like almost ten years ago now, but like when it came out, and then like the second game came out like six months later, and the third game was like six months after that. The next game was like six months after that. They were coming out crazy fast. It was such a big deal for a while. Yeah, because originally it was such a weird era. The fourth game was like originally set to be the last one. Yeah. Until it wasn't, but. When that came out, it was literally, it came out, like, before even a year anniversary of the first game. Yeah. Because the second one came out, like, three months later. It's kind of ridiculous how fast he made those games. Yeah. And, like, they're all, like, for what, how quick they were made, they're not bad. True. I mean, ones. honestly, I mean, for I like, mean, I'm really nostalgic for a lot of them. For just, like, quickly like, online games. Just all like, I'm going to say is if Mark Flo doesn't have a cameo, just getting a half star. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's making his own movie now, so he's definitely well, got to he be in, it. he's got to be in, like... Iron Lung. So yeah, which that doesn't make any sense. Game ever. Yeah. So then, he's yeah. He's also the main character in it. Because he's starring and directing in it. Yeah. Which is like, that's a lot to do for your first movie. Yeah, like, what? I don't really understand. So Bill Hader and his entire SNL career. <laughs> I'm just like writing and directing my first one. Co writing and directing. You are? Yeah. Who are you co directing with? No one. I'm co-writing. Oh, who's co-writing? The friend of mine that oh. we're starting a company with. 
Oh, you started the company with, or he already? Well, they are starting it, and they invited me along as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, luck. You could say that. Um, but I mean, I guess we'll see. It's gonna be interesting. It's coming on the same day as Saw Ten, so I'm gonna have to go to both. Like I have to. Or you can just watch on Peacock. That's true. Excited for another Saw movie. Sure. Probably be bad. Yeah, it will be, but it's a song movie. If it's like, I don't know who they did. They announce the director. I don't well, know. It's filmed. It's done. So. Well, yeah, but did they like? I mean, probably. I think it might be. I think it's one of the writers from the first. I guess movie. I didn't mean that they announced it. I meant, do I remember who it is? Because like, Kevin Gruber. Oh, Kevin Gruder, okay. Because he did uh, Saw 6, Saw six Saw and eight. Saw the Final Chapter, which I hate Saw the Final Chapter, but Saw 6 is like quintessential Saw, so we'll see. If it, it's good, That means it's most likely going to be like the original ones anyway, and then we'll just see what they do convoluted story-wise because that's how it goes. And then some severe crazy traps and blood and gore and all that screaming. Disgusting. Oh, I think the plot point that was that it's overseas too. Overseas? Where would yeah, it be? I think the plot is he has to go somewhere to get like something about his treatment, like to like find out something about like what he has. And then puts people in traps there. Yeah. It might just be like the sixth one again. Saw X, everybody. Uh, yeah, what's the tenth installment this year? Fast X, Saw X. No sleep till Brooklyn. Max. A lot. <laughs> that was last year. Maxine with three X's. Yeah, with fucking Gina Carlo Esposito on it. Yeah. Fucking Gus is in it. Well, fucking Christopher Walken's in Doom too. And somebody was like, he hasn't been like in a major role since like two thousand like nine. Yeah, <laughs> it's so Doom weird. Too? Yes. <laughs> yes. I am excited for Doom too, though. I am excited to see Denis Villeneuve go back to Christopher Walken in a movie. Denise Villanueva? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I have never heard him say his own last name. I was never sure. I'm also pretty sure it's Denise and not Dennis, but it might just be Dennis. I don't know. Great director. Um, FNAF 12. Hype. In the chat. I think we'll definitely get the three movies. Because I think they'll make enough money. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. (laughs) I don't like it. If they're, like, adapting a lot of stuff from different games in this, like, I don't even know what they would do with the trilogy, then. Like, what would be, like, the big climax ending? Yeah. Because, like, the games kind of had that, but, like, kind of not. I mean, the whole freaking story would take, like, many movies to freaking cover, so. Unless, like, it's, like, all long movies, but it's, like, it's, like. Yeah, like, I think they're still, like, I think they're still gonna make more games, too. Yeah. Security Breach was terrible. Yeah. I freaking hate the game. (laughs) so much hype for like two years for it like we're making a free world FNAF game and it's one of those buggy derivative fucking games I've ever seen <laughs> with like two interesting scenes yeah and not scary at all it's made for 12 year olds and Mark Player dumb 12 year olds Mark Player hated that game but he played it yeah cause money <laughs> <laughs> your money that one, uh, there was that one really bad glitch where he kept calling Freddy over and he just kept like walking past him. He's like, Freddy! <laughs> yeah. It's like, Freddy! Like, Helping me not at all. And like, he got on the way even. Yeah. And then he died. Yeah, the game's so buggy. And, like, and like, he couldn't save. Yeah. Because that game won't let you save either until you finish the game when you don't want to play it anymore. So what a stupid. terrible game. Yeah. Who developed that? A failure. The VR game was good though. Yeah. Because it wasn't really like Help a game, it was just VR. Yeah. It just meant to scare the shit out of you. Which, that's, pre- that's pretty well done. I mean, that works for the FNAF franchise pretty well. It was well funny because Mark Blair said that like the first episode he did. Like when he started, he's like, this would be really like scary in like Oculus. <laughs> like 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, I guess not. I love Guardians 3. I love Better Call Saul. And then FNAF movies coming out too. Yeah, our next one will probably be Spider Verse. Probably. We see something else. Yeah, I don't know. Spider Verse comes out in two weeks. I, I know Fast X is out, but I don't know if anything comes out before Spider Verse. But it's interesting. Yeah, and I don't want to go see Fast X. So. Yeah. 
sorry, but I just don't. Okay. I, I don't care. Can you stop judging me for not wanting to see Fast X? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mentioned that. I was like, but what if, what if, what if we go? I mean, I also play maybe. And then she's like, no, 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 no. I think, I, would, I, think I, she, I think she almost broke up with me because she said, uh, because I mentioned it first and she thought like, she was, I thought she meant, she, she thought I meant like we were going to go together and see it. And she's like, if you spend money <laughs> on that of all things. And I was like, well, no, of course we'll go with someone. Well, I guess we'll see you next time. Do you think this will get 200 views? Fast X with through. This will get five views minimum. Yeah, go subscribe to Ellis' channel. Maybe he'll upload again. It's been a while. Probably, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So. Are you going to upload your movie on it when you're done? I could. Yeah. It depends. We'll have first plot details on this channel since it has the most subs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll do a review of it. And I'll okay. just shit on it for like 40 minutes. Oh, thanks, man. This is this Ellis. You just don't say anything. And then you're like, so we'll see you next week. I was like, all right, guys, thanks for listening. <laughs> After you just mercilessly like ripped through my movie. My short film. Like, this guy ate my leftovers. Like, I didn't even offer him. He just took them and started eating them. He ate like my b You offered them to me. What a fat ass. <laughs> Hey, you want my food? Oh, yeah, I'll take it, I guess. Like, you have a food fatty. <laughs> you fucking fat ass. <laughs> They're called Harbulary Battery. They're called Harbulary Battery. Any last thoughts? Harbulary Batteries. <laughs>